So this is a video about time. I really wanted to make a video about uh, the random number generator, but then I wanted to talk about seeding the random number generator, and then I needed to talk about time, and then I thought I would just make a whole video on time. And this is really just about uh, three things that you frequently need to do with time. Maybe not so frequently, but possibly occasionally. Um, the first one is to get the what's called the epoch time and you can you can google this phrase this is the number of seconds that have elapsed since january 1st 1970 not counting leap seconds and um, here it is some previous times that i've run this program you can see um, it's probably gone up you know by a few since then now it's gone up to uh, this number where it was previously that number so like stands through an hourglass these are the the epic seconds of our lives passing by all the time. Um, this is what I'm going to use to seed the random number generator in the next video. So this is kind of the star of the show. Uh, this time type, exactly what it is, might be dependent on your compiler, but I'm printing it out here as sort of an unsigned long. And um, so it's just a it's just a number type. It's like an unsigned long, and you can print it out with ZD, which is the same format uh, that I've been using to print out uh, another type that comes up a lot which is the size T type. Uh, second thing I'm doing here in this next little bit of uh, code here is getting an, a nice pretty print of uh, the, the date and the function the star of the show here that's doing that is uh, C time. So C time is taking a pointer to the epoch time here as input and it returns a string I guess C stands for char and I'm copying that into into this string and then just printing it out to the screen and it's turning this value into a nice uh, ASCII string that you can print to the screen if you want to. Um, the third thing that I'm doing here is I'm timing how long it takes to run the program and I, I stole this code from the internet and so I'm trying to give a citation here. It's on Stack Overflow and I think the phrase that I used to Google uh, whatever I Googled to get this result was C nanoseconds. So you're trying to uh, time what happens in your program at a resolution of at least milliseconds if not nanoseconds. So this is not quite nanosecond accuracy but it's quite a bit better than milliseconds and it's definitely better than just plain seconds. So seconds frequently don't give enough resolution to really know anything about how long a process is taking. So this can be used to, you know, optimize. Here I've got, I've put just a while loop in here to take up some time so that the answer is not zero. Um, but this could be some function that you're working on, you're trying to optimize, you want to know if, or you want to figure out what part of your program is taking up the most time. Uh, this, this kind of thing can be useful. Um, and the person who came up with this code is, is this user who has a nice teddy bear as an icon. And so all of this stuff is, is kind of te technical, I guess. You know, you can read it if you really want to read uh, the man file for time.h. I guess it's all in there, but there's this time spec struct, and here's an instance of it initialized to 0, 0. And these values uh, seem to be the time in seconds is the, uh, the lower value and the time in nanoseconds is, is the upper value here. So this is seconds, nanoseconds, seconds, nanoseconds, they're being initialized to zero. And now you get the clock time, pass it into the start time by giving start time as a pointer to this function, and this is some kind of flag. And there are other flags which you can read about, I'm not really sure what that does. And uh, this part of the code just takes up time now when you're done, you put the, the end time into your ending uh, variable, just like the same code that you used to get it here on line 21. And then there's just some kind of print statement. This stuff is just the math that combines seconds and nanoseconds. My code takes up zero seconds, so this part is just being is just zero. And the reason you're multiplying by one billionth here is because a nanosecond is one billionth of a second. And um, yeah, you know, this, this display accuracy probably has more to do with uh, printf than it does this thing. But I read some things online that 
uh, caution you against taking these nanosecond values too seriously. Who cares about, I mean, you'd have to be doing something really, really precise to actually care about nanoseconds. But anyway, so this is code that you can use to time your program. It's interesting to combine it with uh, the command line uh, time function, which is what I usually use. And you can see that the answer here is um, pretty similar uh, to the user time. So I just I just read about these values. So when you use the time utility, the real time is the total amount of time it took from start to finish. They call that wall time. So that's how long it apparently took to run this code. But you know this is a multi-user, multi-processing operating system. So while your code is running, some other things can get in there and take up processor time. User time is the amount of time that was spent uh, processing the code that you wrote in user mode. And sys is the amount of time that was spent processing your code in kernel mode, which in this case is zero. And so if you're, if you're trying to figure out how efficient your program is, you should sum these two, and that's sort of actually how long your program is taking to run. And you can see it, it agrees with the output from this fancy stuff. Of course, you need the fancy stuff if you want to measure how long a function takes as opposed to how long the entire program takes. So this is still useful. And uh, that's it.